Hello everybody, Sandy here. Today we are, we are doing a VR to Sylvie uh, over at Fairlight Tarot and her really fun tag, Beloved Monster Sticks. I'm so excited about this uh, tag because it's, it's just so fun and she's supplied us with some really great prompts. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to say that the sound might be a little bit different in this video because I am filming this video without my regular microphone because I had been noticing my microphone giving off some kind of weird um, electrical static background noise that I that was really annoying me. So um, we'll try out and see what this microphone the built-in microphone in my phone um how it will measure up all right so the first prompt is the frankenstein um which is a collage deck that is misunderstood but has a heart of gold um i to be honest i struggled with all of these prompts because it felt like I have I had a really hard time categorizing my decks in these prompts. Um, but this one, once I thought of it, there was literally no other deck that I could choose for this prompt. And that is the Goblins and Gardens Tarot. Um, so <clears throat> this one, I don't know how... It, the thing is, I, I don't have a perception if a deck is misunderstood or not, but I have come across people who really don't like or understand this deck. Uh, I didn't actually understand the, the the hype. And then I I suddenly just out of nowhere felt really drawn to it. So I, I went ahead and found it. Um, or rather, I traded with a friend, um, my friend Andy, who had it but didn't really want it anymore. So I traded it with her. And um, and yeah, it's uh, it's just been one of my favourites ever since. Um, this one always gives me such hopeful readings. Um, it always puts things... It's, it's so weird because you wouldn't think it when you see all of these goblins <laughs> and and weird creatures in in these garden settings. But for some reason, the little booklet with this deck as well, all of the entries are in like a almost like a poetic verse. And it's just they are so thoughtful and um and just really yeah they always put a new spin on the tarot for me and and honestly i've just warmed up to the all of these monsters and goblins in this deck um they just all seem to be so kind and thoughtful to me now and i just yeah, I, I will forever just think of this deck as a really, you know, a deck with a heart of gold, but just exactly like the, the prompt says. And, and some of them just make me laugh, like this one is just hilarious <laughs> for the chariot. And, and um, yeah, it is. <laughs> like this strength card as well. It looks like she's tickling him with the flower, which I love. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I just adore this deck and it definitely feels to me that uh, more people would get some really lovely um, messages from this deck if they gave it, gave it a chance. Um, so yeah, that's my Frankenstein deck, a collage deck that is misunderstood but has a heart of gold, and that is the Goblins and Gardens Tarot. Okay, so the next deck is the Dracula, a deck that is sensual and sophisticated. I struggled for quite a while trying to find a deck for this category. Um, I, I don't really have decks that are 
sensual and sophisticated um, in my mind. Um, I don't have a vampire deck, which would have been perfect for this category. Um, but instead I went for the dreams of Gaia. Um, I, now hear me out. <laughs> Because it wasn't my first thought either. Uh, it really wasn't. But it's there's something about this deck that makes that I feel is sophisticated. But another thing that I mean, sensual. I suppose you can find quite sensual cards in this deck. Um, but what I want vote for more is kind of the vibe. And also, if you look, when I started thinking about it. A lot of these characters, to me, <laughs> seem to have some kind of bedroom eyes vibe going on, <laughs> which, which I kind of find hilarious now when I started thinking about it. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty and it's got this kind of mysterious yet sophisticatedness about it. Everybody seems very serious and um, like I said, just bedroom eyes <laughs> and we have you know some some um naked or half naked bodies in here and um quite you know objectively um beautiful people um yeah so i don't know it just gives me the the vibe that would I would describe as sensual and sophisticated um, and it's also you know just very very pretty I love the colors in this deck as well And I, I honestly get such, such interesting readings. This deck could have honestly gone in several of the prompts, um, in my opinion, because I use this deck for a lot of different things uh, or different readings, really. I'm trying to find one of those cards that I was thinking about when I was picking this deck. Um... Well, here's one that was definitely would definitely be part of that. <laughs> um, where is it? Probably not even allowed to show it on. Well, well, this one's very sensual and romantic, in my opinion. So yeah, this. Um, was my Dracula deck um, a deck that is sensual and sophisticated and that was the dreams of Gaia right the next prompt is the werewolf a deck that is best used in a full moon now I could not decide on one deck for this so I'm going to show you two um, the first one I'm going to show you is the anima mundi tarot now it came to my mind and then i pulled it out and i was like oh of course i thought of this it's got moons all over it <laughs> it's got moons on the cut on the box on the guidebook on the backs <laughs> so it was you know quite an obvious choice but when you start looking at the cards when you start looking at the cards it's got this kind of um chill cool tones you know and a vibe that's very kind of night tiny uh, in a most of the cards so we've got this star filled sky or dark skies with a moon on most of the cards so i mean i suppose that's that's one of them um but also when I think of the moon, I think like here we've got the cups, lots of cups. And we've got water and a starry sky. Here we've got two swords with a moon. Well, the moon is in the regular two of swords as well, I suppose. 
but it's just i don't know it just gives off, off a really like calm introspective vibe that i really uh, associate with the full moon and um and it also you know it just looks kind of like it was moonlit the whole thing um and i really really love this this artwork in this deck it's so pretty and um and so yeah this is definitely the the animal deck i would choose to use uh during or used under a full moon The next one I chose for this prompt, the werewolf, and you know, werewolves, I I feel they move in packs, so <laughs> that's my excuse for choosing two. Um, so yeah, the next one is the Dreamkeeper's Tarot. Um, I don't have the box with me here right now, um, but it's by Liz Huston, and. Um, and yeah, this one definitely gives me, you know, the moon vibes. It's dark and dreary and it's got this overall sheen to it. Kind of feels like the whole deck has been painted under a full moon. Um, and it's got lots of moon symbology in it. It also, I mean, the Dream Keeper's Tarot, it, you know, suggests that it's you know, its domain is the night and dreamscapes and, and um, you know, things not quite being as they are or seeming different to how they actually are. And, and it's a bit of a, an odd one, this one. I haven't actually used it that much because um, I haven't quite decided if I like it or not. It's gorgeous in lots of different ways but uh, I think in order to actually start using it it uh, I need to be in the right headspace and uh, and yeah this one is definitely one of those that I would I would probably you know if I were to if I were to imagine myself taking a deck with me out outside under a full moon you know, huddling up under a blanket, maybe next to a fire or something. Um, I would take this deck because it's it's um, mysterious and it's it's um, it's mysterious and it's it's what's the word I'm looking for? Intricate, maybe. Um, but also just yeah dreamy <laughs> dreamy that's what that's what it is as well um and like i said the artwork is absolutely absolutely gorgeous so um yeah this is definitely a moon deck uh in that sense in my opinion so um that was the two werewolf decks um decks that are used best used in a full moon <laughs> the anima mundi and the dream keepers all right the next uh prompt is the grim reaper a deck that feels very final and unmovable wow i feel like all of my decks are very um, most of them are very kind <laughs> and I didn't feel like giving any one of them the title the Grim Reaper but there was one particular deck that I have that came to mind and that was the Golden Tarot of Klimt. Um, this is a deck I've had for a long long time it's actually the second deck I ever owned um, if I can get it out. Um, and I have I, I bought it as a teenager and it, I found it again um, 
when I went through some old boxes uh, at my parents' house and then I brought it back home to me. And, um, and it's just, you know, it's got, it's a deck built from a Klimt's artwork, Gustav Klimt's artwork. Um, but I think it's actually a collage deck um, because it's it's got his artwork, but it's also been changed to work with the tarot system. And the reason I ch I chose this for the Grim Reaper is because a lot of the characters in this deck all seem rather famished. Um, it almost feels like there's some kind of spirits that the Grim Reaper has uh, has reaped, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's like here we've got um, a cut off head. Here we've got a five, the Five of Wands with a lady that also looks like she hasn't been fed in years. It's, um, yeah, they all seem a bit airy and a little bit, um, a little bit creepy, to be honest. And whenever I do uh, have a reading with this deck, it does kind of feel final and and like very stark in its suggestions and um and i think you can see why when you look at the artwork even if it's kind of got these golden flourishes and these colorful elements all the people are very i don't know what to call it it's like they're very pale very almost look some of them look a bit malnourished some of them look very depressed <laughs> king of wands here looks like he he just needs this week to be over <laughs> you know um And it's just a deck where they don't hide anything. It just lets all the bones and tendons kind of jut out. And yeah, it just feels like a very honest deck in a lot of ways. But also kind of the paleness and like the faded like feeling of like the contrast here between his tunic and how faded and and pale he the character looks. It just gives me the feeling of, of them being spirits or or ghosts almost. So yeah, that was my Grim Reaper deck, the Golden Tarot of Klimt. Right, the next monster is the Creature from the Black Lagoon, a deck that loves water but is not afraid of getting dirty. So, um, the deck I chose for this is the wisdom of the depths tarot by lynn thurman um <laughs> a bit on the nose perhaps it's a collage deck centered around the sea and and uh, yeah i mean it's a water deck it's um it's it is what it is i am not gonna <laughs> spin any circles around that i thought about which other decks I could have chosen but couldn't really think of any so my little creature from the Black Lagoon is this deck and you know I always I always really love the artwork whenever I pick up this deck I have not read with it in a whole lot to be honest because 
I don't know what it is, but sea decks and water decks haven't really been my jam lately. And um, But with that said, whenever I do flip through these cards, I always think, wow, that's so impactful. And, um, and yeah, the few times I have read with it, though, it has definitely gotten given me some some something to chew on, um, but I think that's that's gonna be the case with most most tarot decks, you know, um, or all of them. Um, they are there to give you something to chew on, and um, just needs you just need to be in the right vibe, I think, in the right mood set. Uh, mood set? Is that a word? Mindset is what I was thinking of. Mood set. Maybe that's something I should <laughs> should start using. Um, but either way, it's it's definitely an emotional deck. Um because I really I really appreciate when decks have um expressive people on them, like people with expressions that I can read. Um facial expressions i mean and um yeah it's it's definitely got a lot of a lot of uh, things to, to pick up on uh, like this justice here who's holding a swordfish in hand instead of a sword uh, and then this is a hammer shark i believe um it's just, just, it's hilarious in a way. Um, and yeah, I was, I, I don't, I never know why I don't use this, but this one is also really funny. Look, <laughs> this Knight of Wands is holding an ice cream cone, <laughs> which I just think is, 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 um, it's so funny. <sighs> And it's quite a moody one as well. I mean, and it, it's kind of a bit grotty and dirty looking if you look, think of the, like the, the color schemes as well. Um, it's all kind of a bit faded and grotty. So it's a water deck that's a bit dirty. I, I kind of, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I just, I need to leave it out more, I think. Maybe I'll get in the mood. <laughs> to use this one um this is the problem when you have a lot of decks to be honest you find your favorites and you start sticking to them um but yeah this is a really really pretty deck i think maybe for spring i will put this out on my desk and use it i love this eight of pentacles it's one of my favorite cards in the deck i think because of the hat <laughs> Ah, I want. I just want to look through the whole thing now. Oh, look at that eight of cups, five of cups. Sorry, um, so pretty. Yeah. So this was the wisdom of the depths tarot, and it's my creature from the Black Lagoon. Right, number six, the Freddy Krueger, a scruffy deck that has a terrifying sense of humor. All right, so this one might be a bit on the nose. I tried my best to find a deck for this, um, but the only one that actually stood the test for being my Freddy Krueger deck with a terrifying sense of humor um, is none other than the Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. Now, me and this deck, we've got some, <laughs> we've got some words being being said between us, but um, we are working it out. Uh, <laughs> I the more I use it, the more comical I find it. Um, but I think also that the Triomphe de la Luna illustrated Pips edition, uh, I have to thank that for opening my mind up to this deck. I really couldn't take any of this deck when I first saw it. Um, then I got the Triomphe de la Luna. I just felt a very strong pull towards that deck and I love the Triomphe de la Luna. 
I love it so much. It gives me such powerful readings. It makes me chuckle. It makes me so happy. And now it's opened me up to this, the Deviant Moon Tarot. And whenever I use this deck, it makes me laugh, but in a very dark way, <laughs> in a very twisted way. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's dark, it's twisted, it, it, it creeps me out. And I'm just starting to love it just more and more. And, um, and so definitely, this is definitely my Freddy Krueger. <laughs> it's, um, it's just, you know, you've seen this deck before. It's been everywhere for so long. People have talked about it for years. Um, and it just, uh, just look how, how beautiful is this color palette with my autumn leaves right now. It's just perfect. <laughs> so yeah, this one, um, there was, there was no contest really. It was, it was this one for my Freddy Krueger deck. Um, so yeah, that was The Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. Let's just flip a few more. <laughs> All right, that's it. Right, the next one is the Chucky, a doll-like deck that may stab you in the back. Right, so the first thing that came to mind was obviously the Chicoli Tarot, but I didn't go for that one because I don't think that one has ever stabbed me in the back. Um, this next deck that I'm going to show you, though, is quite cheeky and very deceiving in a way. <laughs> So, um, the one I'm going to show you is the Spirit of Flowers Tarot. <laughs> Hear me out on this one. Um, it's sugary sweet in a way, um, heavily influenced by the Sicily Barker flower fairies. Um, but this one is illustrated by um, Antonella Castia Castelli which is an Italian, an Italian um, artist. And these are the backs. And the artwork is absolutely gorgeous and so sweet. But I'm telling you, this sweet artwork combined with the harshness that is tarot sometimes, it just... <laughs> it packs such a punch. And I cannot make this up. When I was choosing these decks, I took this deck out and I was like, you, you are probably my Chucky. And then I shuffled it and I asked it, in what manner would you give me, um, well, no, how did I phrase it? In what manner would you um, give me some... harsh advice or 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 some good advice or something i kid you not the deck the card that it gave me was the tower <laughs> and i was like yep yeah, yeah you have chucked me out of that tower a few times <laughs> and it's just it's just um yeah you're not i thought it's so weird because you're not probably going to see it the way these because these cards are so pretty and they look so innocent but when you ask a question of these little fairy children they just they give you a hard time <laughs> they give you a hard time and it's it's um it's quite funny actually now this deck is unfortunately out of print um so i apologize if i'm creating any um fomo feelings here um but yeah i 
I just, I just really, <laughs> I can't get over how, how um, harsh these, these cute little, cute little fairies can be sometimes. Now, I think maybe I'm also feeling um, this way about this deck part partially because I've been working quite heavily with the actual um, with making my own oracle deck um, with some flower fairies and some of them have just come through to me as having some really harsh lessons to uh, to give me so so yeah um, but I also think it's like I, I again the the facial expressions on some of these um, are just you know in the moment when you are doing a reading and you're looking for some sage advice uh, and you get somebody who looks at you like <laughs> like this or um hang on here's the tower card it gave me earlier <laughs> or this it just gives you this look like ooh, who are you kidding <laughs> It, it it cracks me up, but it also, you know, yeah, this is definitely my, my Chucky deck, which is just a weird thing to say about all of these cute, gorgeous little children. <laughs> but yeah, that's, it's, it is, it is what it is. My Chucky deck is uh, the flower fairies, spirit of flowers, sorry, the spirit of flowers tarot. <laughs> All right, we have three prompts to go. The next one is the zombie, an airy deck that is hungry for brains. Um, I had such a hard time choosing a deck for this, so I actually cheated and I have two. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to show you <laughs> is the tarot for kids. Um, and again, hear me out. <laughs> It's so unzombie like that it could possibly be, and the next one isn't any better. But I just I, I couldn't. Um, it's it's um, yeah. How am I supposed to explain this? Right. Let me try. So when I asked this deck. Um, When I asked this deck how it would how it would categorize its way of giving advice, <laughs> it it gave me the ten of wands, um, which I immediately took to mean you know it's it's gonna give me a a, a run for my <laughs> it's gonna give it's give me it's going to why can I not talk it's going to give me a hard time it's going to give me a lot to think about um, and. Overall in this deck as well, it just got this very airy feel to it. It's the colour palette for me. And I'll look at this as well. The the ace of wands, we have these leaves just kind of flying everywhere. It looks like they they're they're being carried by the wind almost. And it's just got this yeah, airiness. Here we've got these big billowing clouds, and it's just yeah feels like an airy deck and like all tarot decks it gives me a lot to think about um and different perspectives all the time so is um i don't use this deck as much as i would like because it's so big i cannot handle this deck the way i would like and i can't i can't trim it really because I don't want to trim off any of this beautiful artwork. So, um, yeah. But it's a very, very pretty deck. I actually really adore this artwork. Um, and in my opinion, <laughs> it does really make me think a lot of the time. But it's also very heavily based on the Rider Waite Smith deck um you can see that in most of the cards and um and so i can't really say that it's 
unique in that aspect. But the readings that I have done with it have given me such answers um, as to feeling that it does really challenge me mentally. Um, which is what I would take to be meant by hungry for brains, <laughs> you know, um, a mentally challenging deck. And it's just gorgeous <laughs> as well. So yeah, that's the tarot for kids. The next one I couldn't leave behind is a deck that I, I just also have had some really profound deep thinking readings with and that's the tarot of mystical moments um now whether or not it's an airy deck i'll let you be the judge of that but i do feel like it's got even though it's the tones are a lot warmer in this one in comparison to the tarot for kids um we do have a lot of airy imagery in this deck like in this one here we've got justice where her hair is turning into the clouds um we've all we've almost always got something flying in the air here we've got the queen of wands with uh, a bunch of different moths and and uh, we've got some fireflies and some dragonflies and a bee here we've got a literal person swooping through the air on a feather, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, and here we've got people holding balloons, it's a very, it's got a lot of air symbology in a lot of the decks, and, um, sorry, a lot of the cards, and I really just, I definitely just feel this has a very airy, um, attitude and also it's also um very cleverly done so i feel like it's the 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 way that um the artist uh catherine welch stein has done this deck it's very clever in a lot of ways and the things that she has chosen to put into the deck uh, and the way that she is um choosing to convey certain things um, just makes you think and that's that's the kind of thing that I would definitely classify as a um, airy deck that is hungry for brains it's uh, it's engaging my my brain in a way I see all of these different things I see the birds here he's holding a ship there are fish deep diving deep down into his into his nether regions <laughs> i was going to say please please um scratch that um but it just makes me think what did she mean with about this what what is that what does this mean like um here we've got all of these different hands with their sewing needles sticking their needles into her big massive hair it's just there's so many different things to to look at and to wonder about and to to think about from different kinds of angles and i just yeah if i were to choose one out of these two decks it would probably be this one which is what i would have should have done from the beginning um but i didn't so we have two decks um and zombies you know they also travel in packs really <laughs> So that's why you get two decks from this category as well. <laughs> so yeah, that's the um, two zombie decks, um, Airy and Hungry for Brains. And that's the Tarot of Mystical Moments and the Tarot for Kids. All right, so number nine. Pennywise the Clown, a deck that is deceivingly whimsical, but it's actually very intense. Okay, now I have no excuse for this one because Pennywise the Clown is a lone ranger. <laughs> but I again have two decks in this category. And the first one is the Fairy Tarot. Um, 
by oh what's her name Nat natalie hertz that's it um and it's just this one i chose because of i look at all of these glaring colors it's very jazzed up with all lot of sparkle and pizzazz and and it's just it looks like it's very this whimsical little fairy world where things but it's still got this little edge to it um but either way once you start reading with this deck it can become quite serious quite quickly <laughs> i would have chosen another deck for this as well i have several of these whimsical looking decks but i feel like all of my whimsical decks um are intense they are they are deceivingly intense uh, sorry whimsical um i could have put my uh, flower sorry the spirit of flowers tarot that i just mentioned in this category i could also have put forest of enchantment tarot i could have put any of my fairy decks any of, of my cutesy decks they are they all pack a punch to be honest but this one this one does it in such a way i don't know it's also to do with the guidebook i think the guidebook is actually quite can be quite harsh um and so yeah this one is definitely uh, a clown in my collection um that packs a punch even though it's so colorful and and uh cutesy looking in a lot of the cards but then you also have these characters look at that i love it i love that card <laughs> but then we also have these characters <laughs> again i keep getting distra distracted by all, by all the cuteness but we also have these characters uh in this deck let me see if i can find one now who have who has this airy kind of feel to them who just feel like they're gonna chop your head off if you <laughs> if you don't behave you know so and this sun card cracks me up but it's also super creepy <laughs> the moon is not better <laughs> the moon is there the moon is worse <laughs> so yeah um that's the fairy tarot by natalie hertz hertz sorry um the next one i wanted to show you is probably not as clowny or as um deceiving to be honest but it's the stella's tarot um it's, I mean, even the name, Stella's Tarot, sounds so soft and cute, you know? Um, and the color palette is, is really, you know, kind of intense with its oranges and pinks and blues and reds. And it's just, you know, very, like, look at this lover's card so cutesy with the little fairy wings and everything but then it also just has these really strong looking characters a bit weird and a bit curious i don't know it's a bit here we even have something that looks like a clown almost um you know juggling and but the the, the readings this gives it can be so intense and and it's just yeah it's not a deck to be taken lightly in my opinion um but then again no tarot deck is in my opinion either so um so this one is definitely a um what should we call it a backup penny pennywise or a um runner-up pennywise because i just needed to mention it um because it's got this little quirky looking artwork and you don't really think it's gonna it's gonna pack such a punch but it does it really does um, you've got these jester type looking 
people as well. And they just kind of look a bit like they're part of a circus, some of them, you know. Um, so yeah, that's the Stella's Tarot. And um, and the Natalie Hertz uh, Fairy Tarot for Pennywise the Clown. A deck that is deceivingly whimsical, but is actually very intense. Mm, right, so the last one is The Mummy. A deck that is covered in many layers. So... I have two for this one as well. <laughs> Don't come at me, please. Um, all right, but the first one um, is kind of an obvious one and the second one is a bit of a hidden gem. So um, let's start with the obvious one. And that is the Star Tarot. Now, this is the first, um, the first edition version. So it's got these huge borders um, that I've been meaning to trim off, but I haven't yet because um, I haven't decided how I want to trim it yet. Um, but yeah, so this deck is just absolutely chock full with symbology and it's got many layers to it because it's in implementing all of these different symbols symbol symbols as well as astrology and and oh, all kinds of things the guidebook is thick and it's just got page after page of different meanings um for each card depending on on the different symbol like explaining all the symbols I bet there's some alchemy in here as well. I am not well versed, as you can tell. Um, I have not worked with this deck much yet, um, so I cannot um, actually talk too much about it. I just know that it's a little bit intimidating. It's got lots of layers, and here we are. <laughs> it is a mummy deck. And we also have, you know, we see some astrology pointers here. We have some some uh, nods to some kind of Native American religions here or beliefs. Um, we've got animal symbolism. We've got, oh, yeah, just loads of different um, things going on in this deck. And bet you there's also some kabbalah tree of life stuff in here i also know there's some chakra uh, symbolisms as well so yeah this this deck has a lot going on <laughs> the next and the last deck that i wanted to share with you in a deck that i have a very special connection to is the anecdotes tarot and this one has many layers because it is now this one is a kickstarter edition that i was gifted by my lovely friend krista thank you so much again krista for this deck um i've trimmed it after she had trimmed it as well <laughs> so it's been trimmed several times over but this deck let me put it down because it's quite big this deck um is based on or built on um, the songs of Joanna Newsom. Um, and Joanna Newsom has these like poetic kind of folk music-esque um, storybook songs uh, where she's, she basically sings almost like an entire fable and, and, or a fairy tale and, and each of the, cards in the major arcana um, are connected to one of her songs and then the rest of the deck the minors uh, have connections to different or nods to different parts of each song like there might be something mentioned in a song uh, that is then depicted as one of the minor cards so 
there is a lot of different layers to this de this deck you can interpret it as a regular tarot deck of course you can look at the picture and look at what kind of which card it represents like for instance in this one we have the king of wands which is an old granny sitting here doing her embroidery and i mean that already is quite impactful to me as somebody who uh, does a lot of of um, fiber crafting you know um and the artwork is absolutely stunning. I adore this deck so much. Um, here we've got the Five of Cups, I believe. I haven't used it in a, quite a while, so I'm a bit rusty with the... Because all of the suits have their own type of border, and I've left some of the border on. But I have... Yeah, these are the coins. And the cups, I believe, is the pink one. These are these are the the mages. This, yeah, the mages. And then we have this is the sword suit. I'm fairly sure. Yeah, it is the cups, because this is the Queen of Cups. So yeah, this this one has a lot of layers, and I've I've gone in and and studied some of the cards, but honestly, it's it's a, it's quite a demanding deck, and and I still learn something new all the time. I haven't been able to use it for a long time now or being able and being able I haven't used it in a while now because I've had so many new decks to explore um but I just I adore this deck so much it makes me so happy whenever I use it I love this sun card so much This is one of my favorite, my favorite hanged one ever. It's just, it's so good. I love it. I love it so much. So anyway, that's the anecdotes tarot. Um, I can't remember the name of the of the creator, but her Instagram handle is clownmonger, <laughs> which is a, a perfect name. I love that name. <laughs> But anyway, um, so that's the mummy decks, the deck that is covered in many layers. And that's the Anecdotes Tarot and the Star Tarot. All right, that was it, you guys. Thank you so much again to Sylvie at Fairlight Tarot for this really lovely fun tag um yeah those were my monster decks and i really really enjoyed going through my decks and experiencing them and thinking about them from this different perspective it was a lot of fun and i hope you enjoyed it um yeah so please take care of yourselves and be well my friends and i'll see you in my next video Bye bye